each and every one of you a new TV program. A new TV program? Mark, so what do you think, Mr. Gates? Well, I think it might work, but the job would have to be done properly. Could have, could have looked genuine, real van, real money. I'm the wrong hero. And this is the story of how I am and who I came to be. I'm the wrong hero. And I prop up the cheap nihilism of an aggressively ignorant pop culture. And if I had God, I'd ask him five questions. God, why do I burn the hair off my arms every time I cook? God, why does the toilet lid fall every time I urinate? God, if I built a door-shaped mouse trap, would the mice be the path to my world? God, when it's raining cats and dogs, do the cats and dogs reconcile their rivalry on the way down? God, does the universe lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? That's what I would ask God. Because I'm the wrong hero. I'm independent, outspoken, and not addicted to steady work. I'm the wrong hero. And I must be the greatest man in the world. I want to give a great big party, but I don't want to pay for it. I want to help the poor, but not with my money. My money. My I want to serve money. My money. at the highest level of government, and yet fornicate and regurgitate at will. My goal in life is to live forever. And once I've accomplished that, I'll figure out what I want to do. Destroying your feeble, puny, pandering earth comedy gives me the greatest satisfaction. Because I'm the wrong hero. Nobody ever got fat pitching fastballs past me. I can eat my weight in potato candy and canned cream corn. Me, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary can beat all of you and the 12 disciples. Because my God is bigger than your God. My God eats eternity ration. And my motto is, everything belongs to me. I don't want to give my rocking horse to the Emir of Kuwait. I will not send my half-eaten mashed potatoes to Pakistan. I want to sell Krugerrands to juvenile delinquents and slaves to their anorectic wives. I want to use the 
Sahara Desert as the town dump. And if they spill oil offshore, I wear horoscopes on my glasses so I can see with 2020 foresight. Superboy is my punk. He steals potatoes from local markets and we sit in front of a trash can fire, furtively giggling as he roasts them with his heat vision. Orphan Annie is my lookout when I'm calling a job and no parking zone sign face is not available. I shake down Dick Tracy Jr. for his lunch money. Richie Rich shines my shoes. And I use Charlie Brown's head as my cue ball. My lawyer is so lazy, he picks his own pockets. I gave a clown with a broken heart an exploding Jarvik 7. And I performed the operation on my unicycle. I think I'm going to go to college to get my second degree. Because anything would be better than staying home and getting the third degree. Okay. So just I'm the wrong hero. In my world, light beer is outlawed. Yeah. There, there is no tab. Elvis Presley is really dead. In my world, everybody eats with stone axes. Burt Reynolds never existed. And detergent was never invented. We have anti-ivory soap. It's 99 and 44, 100% junk. It's black. It stinks like shit. And it sinks to the bottom of the fucking tub. <laughs> but it's really good for your skin. For your skin, for your skin, for your skin, for your skin. My girlfriend's mad. I farted in a bank. <laughs> I'm chipping open the sand in my eyes with a cold chisel, and she wants to go shopping on Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Saturday morning. We can't have one speck of dirt on the floor because everywhere she looks, she sees a micro army. This woman's got microscopic vision and Superman. Our latest crisis, I left a wet towel on the bed. Hiroshima, Auschwitz, Vietnam, Iraq, and the rock hero leaves a wet towel on the bed. She uses $20 worth of water in the dishwasher to recycle one spaghetti sauce jar. Whenever she sees a kitten or snuggles the fabric softener bear or anything with cute round eyes, be a Hitler, she always goes, oh. But when, helpless, there might be a puby in there. But when she sees a harmless insect, she goes, oh, a bug, kill it, kill it. She pretends to like football, and rednecks pretend
pretend to like Spike Lee. <laughs> but they're not fooling anybody. I come home expecting a steak. She says, Oh, I've got an English muffin with a little bit of tomato sauce and some slice of provolone. <laughs> do you think I could do this? On a diet like that? I believe in the four beers for breakfast diet. Brain fat just melts away like magic! <laughs> And the X-Lax diet. And the x -lax. Shed ugly brown pounds in seconds! <laughs> Beer shit. I'm not in public. Now you've done it. Now you've done it. Now you've done it. And the thing about women is they want you to have a baby. A baby who for the next four years, in one form or another, We'll say one thing and one thing only. Wow! <laughs> Pay attention to me! Look at my screaming face! Stop having fun! Is that what you're doing now? Hey, mighty perceptive. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to Einstein's snack shack. <laughs> We serve only the choicest and juiciest and most intelligent parts of Einstein's brain at Einstein's Snack Shack. My kid said his first word yesterday. He's a chip off the old block. He said his first word. <laughs> I used to have a job taking children's photographs. 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 My photo agency was called Watch the Vulture or he'll tear your eyes out! Because I grew up in a terrible neighborhood. We used to play dodgeball with cats. <laughs> we used to give Indian birds to real Indians. We used to set the bushes on fire. We never got to the quails. We used to set off firecrackers in graveyards. We used to go fishing in church. We used to spit in salad bars. We used to throw stink bombs at nuns. We used to tease a caged gorilla. We used to throw rocks at trains. We used to play chicken with Greyhound buses. We used to go elevator surfing. We used to tell God to shut up. We used to go to convenience stores and inhale the nitrous oxide out of whipped cream cans. You know, people on drugs notice everything. Nice vomit. It Hitler, World War II memorabilia, enemy ace comic books, you name it, David Duton of all the Now Central Square is going upscale. The roaches don't drink water, they drink flavored seltzers. <laughs> they don't eat garbage, it's designer filth. They've made a condo out of our spare room. Spare room, spare room. Spare they tacked up a little sign. Welcome to Vermin Court. Red bugs and silverfish, please use the servant's 
And the bums stand outside my door saying things like, It's a good rubbing alcohol. It's not a great rubbing alcohol. <laughs> I had a job selling psycho dog food. Came in four different varieties. Psycho one, baby pit bull. Psycho 2, Adolescent Doberman. Psycho 3, Senile Police Dog. And Psycho 4, All Purpose Attack Dog Child. I'm the wrong hero. And people say to me, That's my kid. And I believe them. And that proves it. I declared war on myself. Because I'm my own worst enemy. I put up big ugly pictures of myself with a caption that read, this is the face of the enemy. I dropped propaganda leaflets on my own head, urging me to surrender. I spread malicious rumors about myself at work. That wrong hero. He always comes in 15 minutes late, and he's always drinking the milk for the coffee supply. And he makes thousands of Xerox copies without paying for them. I even held myself for ransom. I called myself up and said, Hello? I am holding you for ransom at the old warehouse, and if you ever want to see yourself again, and then I hung up. And then I hung up, 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 and then I hung up. I filled out my unemployment application in three different colors of ink. And now I'm getting disability. <laughs> I say, let's end the senseless violence. Let's have some sensible violence for a change. They're always talking about shiftless bums. What, what about what about an aggressive bum? Shapeless bum. No Here, here's, no the, here's an aggressive bum. I know that you ask yourself this question. Where would I be without my God-given talent for sponging drinks? <laughs> yeah, I've been in jail. All the other convicts got coffee. I stirred my coffee and I said, what is this? They said, that's not coffee, that's water. One nice thing about being in jail, at least your parents know where you are. Give me a half parents. I was in a band. It was called the Street Beatles. We used to do songs like, I want to hold your purse.
to break anything. But you have several dozen bones, which I might be willing to make an exception for. <laughs> Angry Bob Hope you're messing with. That's the best one you had in months. Yeah. Funny thing happened to me on the way to Lebanon. I got my leg blown up. Blow up Bob Hope. <laughs> Fellas threw me off an ocean liner. And all I could do was Bob hopelessly. <laughs> I'm in constant rebellion and have been since my earliest childhood because my parents always wanted to feed me food that I didn't want. So that's why you got that belly? That's not my belly. What, that's a small pillow? It's my dick. Bullshit! If you were a girl, I might try to challenge you. I'm not a girl. Really? <laughs> I'm proving I don't think that's necessary. We, we would need a tweezers and magnifying glass. <laughs> hey, come on, don't make me feel small. You're only as old as you feel. You have such a fine white hand. I can tell you've never done a hard day's work in your life. I'm always trying to, you know. Work? You don't know what work is. I'll tell you what work is. Work is getting up every morning at 4 a.m. Backbreaking labor, 16 hours a day, without so much as a time to take a piss or smoke a pot. That's work. Of course, I never did it myself, but I know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, my folks were always trying to feed me food that I didn't like. Like bananas. This mealy, sickly crud, only fit for six sprouts and toothless old men. <laughs> Brussels sprouts, evil little cabbages, from hell. I know to hell the devil's eyes will be two Brussels sprouts bleeding. Miniature carrots. No, miniature gold. <laughs> it's right next to the Shell Station. Michael J. Fox, Tattoo, all of the midget celebrities go there. And what about Fig Newtons? Fig Newtons! This awful sweet bats cookie stuffed with seeding crud! And carrots. Yeah, they'd always give you carrots. Carrots improve your vision at night. That's bullshit. Yeah, just when you need it the most, when you're asleep. <laughs> and apples. An apple a day. Yeah, it keeps the doctor away. I want to know what kind of fruit keeps the policeman away. <laughs> Papaya. Papaya. No, no, I got something. I got this little thing that, that you hang from your dashboard. It smells like a it smells like a policeman's pension check. <laughs> Once I get one whiff of that, oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I like to go to the politically incorrect ice cream store. They have 33 flavors. Dolphin. Chewing tobacco. Owl. Mexico City car exhaust tubes. Dead rat? Dead rat. Dead rat? Dead rat? Dead rat? Dead rat. Dead, dead, what? dead rat? Dead rat. No, that's Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> okay. In view of the recent Rancho Messiah apocalypse, I came out with a few bumper stickers. David Koresh supports the wrong hero. No, not quite. David Koresh is my co-pilot. Caution, Messiah on board. And 
high break for compound fires. <laughs> I'd like to tell a joke. Batman gave Superman a parrot. And the parrot said, Batman's girlfriend is prettier than Superman's girlfriend. That's a matter of taste. So just for a joke, Superman gave Batman a parrot, which said, Batman uses anabolic steroids. Uh, hey, listen, I know I didn't think I was doing bad till I saw the vultures circling the stage here. What? <laughs> Nobody writes to scratch the stage and, and rip your dress. Now you got the right yeah. man cough. Can, can I quote Ken Wall? <laughs> I'll wrap a fucking ratchet around you. Not much. Not much, Ken Wall. Listen, listen. Alright. Well, I've been the wrong hero. I was not wrong hero, music. I was great. You've been adequate. You were great. Now. Well, you. Well, you are beginning to bar me. You make me nervous. Nervous. And do you want to know? I can't. Because you're evil. Me? I'm not an evil. No, hold on. Evil! But I'm not an evil. I didn't know you could yodel. 
That is the world's oldest joke to ever be told on the world's oldest stage. This stage was here when the Flintstones were putting on their annual show to benefit Fred, who lost all of his money in Rock Vegas. Hey, has anybody here ever been to Canada? It's a real party country, isn't it? Ice is free, and vomit freezes before it hits the ground. Man, that is the kind of swinging place I just want to spend the rest of my days, I'm telling you. And you know how they punish convicts? They make them stay outside of the penitentiary. And their literacy rate is 99.9%, .9%, highest in all the world. The only trouble is, in Canada, you only have to know six words. Dear Mom, it snowed. Love, Pierre. Just think of it. 99.9% .9 literacy rate and a working vocabulary of only six words. I was at MIT and I saw a piece of graffiti in the toilet stall. It said, Congratulations. If you can read this, you are now shitting at a 45 degree angle. I'm sorry I said that ugly word, angle. I also don't like the word shit. I prefer the phrase, brown monuments to a healthy appetite. You can turn the music down now, please, thank you. I'm the wrong hero, but my first words on leaving the womb were, there was once a little bird with a broken wing, couldn't fight and couldn't sing, couldn't walk and couldn't pump. That poor little bird was shit out of luck, and so will you be if I don't get a tip in my mouth right now! Of course, it sounded like wah. But I knew what I was saying. I'm the wrong hero. I wrestled with my conscience. And I won. I cheated. And I don't care. Come here. Reverse psychology. Gets them every time. I gave my girlfriend a disengagement ring. That's because she's an existentialist. You know how people always say they have the world's worst headache? I have the world's best headache. It buys me drinks. You know how July 4th is Independence Day? I think June 4th should be Slavery Day. Of course, if you're a working man, every day is slavery day. So maybe I'm out of line. When I was a kid, I'd hear that all the time because I'm the wrong hero, and this is the story of how I am and who I came to be. Adults were always calling you by every name but your own. You're out of line, little mister. Cut out them shenanigans, little boy. Quit them monkey shines, little chief. Stop getting in trouble, little captain. Every name but your own, which was Pest, Pest. But you know something? I never worried about money. You're lying. Well, not recently. Not in the last half hour, because money can't buy you friends, but your enemies are a whole hell of a lot better dressed. Money can't buy you health, although you feel better when you have a lot of it in your pocket. So much for money. You know, the Pope said, drug addiction is grounds for divorce. The wrong hero says, marriage is grounds for drug addiction. I'm the wrong hero. Famous rock star, 
I'd like to sing my first single. single. Heads you die, die, tails I kill you. Kill you. Backed with, I came, I saw, I blew your head off. No, maybe not. The acoustics aren't right. And I didn't get my complimentary 24 beers in my contract writer. Oh, but I was in a band called the band from New York that everybody's impressed by, even though they've never heard of. We never had a gig, but just living up to our name. This is the story of how I am and who I came to be. My parents wanted me to succeed. I said, who cares? My parents wanted me to get along with others. I said, I can't even get along with you. My parents wanted me to be neat and have good manners. I said, fuck that! My parents wanted me to be mentally alert. alert. I think, think. I, I don't. Remember, my father was a meat and potatoes man. His arms were made of french fries and his legs were made of pork chops. Nobody in my family had a car, but my uncle rode in a Cadillac once. He was being taken to the gas chamber! I was Catholic, but when I went to confession, they threw me out of church because I asked the priest if he had any paper on his side. I tattooed the word love on my left hand knuckles and hate on my right hand knuckles so that every time I go to bed, I can have a love-hate relationship with myself. When I graduated from college, everybody said to me, wrong hero, what are you going to do now? And I said, I was a waiter here, and someone said to me, there's a little girl in my suit. And I said, if you don't like it, get out! I remember the first words my employer ever said to me. He said, you dropped the pan of lasagna! I was a security guard. Security guards fall into three categories. Old Pops. Who looks like Simon Barr Sinister. Always pushing around a big broom. Old Spencer, bald head, janitor's cap. Never married. Too devoted to his dust buster. That's one type of security guard. <laughs> then there's Lang, the high school graduate. His biggest claim to fame. Well, I'm a high school graduate. I'm the first person in 20 generations of my family to graduate from high school. And then there's the belligerent drunk security guard. And he's always the one you get whenever you need a security guard. You come running up to him in the hallway going, Guard! Guard! And he says, yep. How would you like it if I ran down the hallway going, Victim! Victim! Started a magazine. It was called 
Death Row magazine. It was for people on death row, but it went out of business after the first issue. Maybe it was the scratch and sniff gas chamber insert that did me in. I'm trying out for a part in a play. It's called The Death of Elvis. I got the role cinched because I already have six or seven drugs in my body. Me and my girlfriend argue over what her first words were to me. I say they were, Excuse me, that's my beer you're drinking. She says that they were, Why are you picking through that garbage? She visited me at work. She said, I thought you were the manager of this place. Why are you up to your elbows in filth? I said, the dishwasher couldn't make it today. And I figured I'd help out. I got her a Christmas present. I got her from some steel wool pads. They even had a little soap in them. I said to her, I can't give you security, but I can give you a security deposit. Whatever the hell that means. She says to me, wrong hero, let's have a kid. And I say, shouldn't we get married first? She says to me, wrong hero, let's buy a house. And I say, shouldn't I get a job first? And that reminds me. When Mary was pregnant with Jesus, did she drink coffee? <laughs> I just want to know. Charlie Fox, the UPS man, itinerant comedian, likes to tell the charming anecdote as to how 80% of all men masturbate in the shower. This story has always puzzled me because I'm thinking, who in the hell did they get to make this survey anyway? Wanted one guy to go peering in guys' showers. I don't know. When I was in eighth grade, I took sex education. It was taught by the coach. And he said, does anybody want to stand up and tell me what they do when they feel the urge to play with themselves? One boy said, every time I feel like I want to masturbate, I play the tuba. It was hard to understand him though because his tongue was the size of a pumpkin. As for me, the wrong hero says, Masturbation is the poor man's Nintendo. <laughs> I like to change babies' diapers, especially if baby is 18 years old. Doing my laundry is like my sex life. It happens twice a year, it weighs 200 pounds, and it takes 12 hours! 
<laughs> Most guys, when they have sex, they say, most guys, after having sex, they say, was it good for you? I don't say that. After I have sex, I always say, thank you, thank you! Now I'm going to segue to Bill Clinton. This is postmodernist comedy when you point out the connecting threads of each humorous monologue or bit for the benefit of the uncomprehending audience. Bill Clinton had a nightmare. He dreamed he was picking his own pocket. I was in Montana, took a train trip, got to talking with some fellow. I said, I said, I said, I said, Bill Clinton is in horse's ass. And he said, them's fighting words around here, mister. And I said, why? Is this Clinton country? And he said, no, it's horse country. The bad news is, I am the wrong hero, and I have come to destroy your puny, feeble, farcical earth comedy. The good news is, I eat politicians and piss gasoline. People always say that a dog is man's best friend. I say, And people are always talking about the magic of Disney. I'll tell you what the magic of Disney is. The magic of Disney is getting toothless infants to worship a six foot tall rat. That's the magic of Disney. When I was in college, I almost flunked motivational psychology because I couldn't get a textbook. But then I stole the teacher's copy and I passed with flying colors. And that's why I'm where I'm at today. And now I would like to do one of my sensitive, heart-rending impressions produced only after hours of labor feverishly sitting before the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, listening for endless impressions of the great man's voice and mannerisms to draw from, draw, 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 draw. This is an impression of Muttley from Wacky Races and later the perils of Penelope Pitstop. And now I would like to sing for you my favorite song. I enjoy this song because of its sophisticated lyric imagery, its complex orchestration, but most of all because of the sinuous polyrhythm. It is called Land of a Thousand Dances. I was walking in Manhattan and I saw a parked car with a sign in it that said, No radio. 
So I smashed that window, and I left a little sign of my own that said, get one. I came back the next day, and my sign had been replaced with another one, which said, no. So I left the sign in the parking space and said, no car. I'm the wrong hero because I'm always in the wrong place at the wrong time, and everything I do is wrong. But I do know what to bring to a children's party. My favorite thing to bring to a child's birthday party is a 40-ounce bottle of Black Label! That excites the kiddies. I'm doing a television show for Fox. It's called Aborigines something. And all the shows are written by Native American Indians. But the plots are very monotonous, having to do, as they do, with broken treaties, genocide, recipes for pemmican, and how to make yourself bulletproof. And the sponsors are Flint, Palomino Minoni, and Twin Bladed Tomahawks. You know, I think my house was built on the site of an ancient Indian burial ground. Maybe it's the army blankets infested with smallpox, or maybe it's the peyote buttons in the shape of Venno markers that tipped me off. This episode of The Wrong Hero is brought to you by Felonious Crunch. So good, it's criminal. Every box comes with a free serial killer. And, do you spank your puppy with ordinary newspapers? Try this. Try, this. Try spanking Spank with a special newspaper, which has his face on the front cover and a headline which reads, Kippy Bad Dog! And ads for carpet cleaners on pages three and four. This episode of The Wrong Hero is also brought to you by Leona Helmsley Medical Art. Help me, I'm a felon and I can't get off! <laughs> and by No Look. Friends, do you eat locusts? Do locusts stay in your tea? Try this simple test. Breathe into the shroud of Turin. If it turns brown, you need no milk. The locust eater's too posh. Comes in regular and gall and wormwood flavors. And now, Neil Simon Peter, in association with the wrong hero, would like to present the God Couple. The God Couple had a run of 23 shows, making it the longest lasting sacrilegious prime time television show to be ever aired on a major network. Episode one finds Oscar, the Buddha, upset at Jesus, Felix Hunger, because he leaves his face on all the towels and he walks up the shower nozzle. Episode two finds Murray the cop angry at Jesus because his poker hand is five kings, including himself. Oscar is upset in episode three because Jesus comes in naked and bleeding and says he lost his robe in a dice game. In episode four, Buddha becomes angry at Jesus because he persists in doing carpentry around the house without using nails. In the next episode, 
Buddha becomes upset because Jesus turns his beggar's bowl into a sailboat. In the episode after that, Jesus' his feelings are hurt because Buddha attains nirvana and fails to recognize him. In perhaps the most beloved episode of The God Couple, Jesus unsuccessfully attempts to persuade Buddha to masquerade as Santa Claus for the orphanage and has to put on 250 pounds. Oscar, the Buddha, is very amused. When Jesus' former wife comes back, suing for 2,000 years worth of alimony. But that's nothing to the chuckles when Jesus decides to take a trip to California, but comes back when he discovers that the pilot of the plane is conscious pilot. And how's about the time that Buddha got upset because Jesus gave his coin collection away? Or for that matter, the time Jesus went walking on the lake and almost got run over by Buddha's speedboats. By the time Jesus got caught for drunken driving and got thrown in jail because he walked a straight line across the water. But what about the time Buddha decides to be the priest at his own wedding? Or about that crazy crash diet that Buddha goes on in which he refuses to eat before noon. But for that matter, what about the time Jesus whoops up a meal of loaves and fishes for the Buddha and expands them while they're in the Buddha's stomach? For the time Jesus and Buddha go white water rafting and Jesus turns the white water into white wine. For the time that Jesus tries to take a photograph of camera shy Muhammad. Or the final episode in which Buddha dies and is reincarnated as a ranting coroner on another network. That was the God God. Watch for Jesus and Buddha in the production of Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God, starring Tyrannosaurus Rex. And now I'd like to tell a little joke. Okay. Okay. Seems as though. Seems as though Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. We're going shopping in a supermarket. Tolstoy was buying groceries for his serfs, and Dostoevsky cut in front of him in line. When Tolstoy complained, Dostoevsky said, all I want to do is buy a little bottle of poison. This episode of The Wrong Hero has been brought to you by Moxie. 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 It tastes the way I feel. And by the penis. And by Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. And by tarantula child. Is your spider hurt? Is your spider or arachnid sluggish? Is your spider or arachnid sluggish? Tired? Why don't you feed a tarantula child? Scorpions love it too. The Wrong Hero is also brought to you by Recombinant DNA. We bring things to life. And by Frankenstein Chow and We Belong Dead Mix. We Belong Dead Mix. Frankenstein asks for it by name. And by Huckleberry Finnegan's Way. Well, I've been great. In fact, 
The weekly award for best performance by The Wrong Hero goes, as it goes every week, to The Wrong Hero. To conclude my story of how I am and who I came to be, I would like to tell you an anecdote. When I was nine years old, we used to throw pennies at black children. Funny thing was, they all had Lincoln's face on them. The pennies, not the black children. You are beginning to bore me. Music, please. Louder. Can I borrow a cup of heroin? 
It's not for me. It's for a sick friend. He's got a nasty cold. That's the only thing that'll wipe it out. I'm the wrong hero. And like many of you, no doubt, my dog is my best friend. All of my best friends piss in the corner and make better trees with their genitalia exposed. I'm the wrong hero. I'm from Devil's Island and he's from mine. I wrote an unauthorized autobiography. It's called People Who Tell the Truth Are Never Very Popular, So Let's Kill Them! All three of them. Turn up the music. This is the sensitive, poignant part of my exposition. I wrote my resume. It reads. This is my resume. It's mine. Do you hear me? Mine. Get your filthy hands off of it. You potato chip eating pervert. For I have seen you follow French fries in the employee's back room with an evil smirk. And you're smudging up. My resume. It's mine. Do you hear me? Mine. I'm the wrong hero here. People don't owe me any favors. But that too will change when I get my gun. Because you see, there's a bullet with my name on it. And it's been bouncing checks all over town. My apartment smells like cat piss. And the hell of it is, I don't own a cat. I don't own an apartment. I often think about George Washington and how he never told a lie. Washington never told a lie. How did he get laid? I invented a cigarette pack the size of an artificial heart. I invented a Bible for children. It's called the Bib. The Old Testament is one word. No, 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 no. And the New Testament is one word. Because. My father told me that if I built a better mouse trap, the world would be a path to my door. <clears throat> and I said, Dad, wouldn't it be cheaper to get construction workers to do it? There's a lot of controversy over who killed John F. Kennedy. I confess, I did it. But I was only six years old at the time, and Oswald had to help me aim. There I was in the Texas Book Depository. I couldn't even get a grip action on that rifle. Oswald helpfully got some Texas telephone books and perched me up on him, right over Dealey Plaza and the motorcade. 
will it tell us to all of our stone? I am going to put on a production of Your Arms Are Too Short to Box with God, starring Tyrannosaurus Rex in the title role. What's the matter, buddy? You look pretty sad. So constipated. Mm. You ever notice that ream is a word that only men use? Well, just get a paper clip and ream it out of there, baby. You never hear a woman saying a word like that, nor do you ever hear men say, it's tasty. Not very often, anymore. Because there's nothing new under the sun. It's all old and burned and somebody is selling it at a flea market somewhere. A woman came in here breastfeeding her baby. And I said, I'm sorry, but we can't permit beverages from the outside. That's sick. You disgusting pervert. I ought to tell the Boy Scouts on you. You and that J. Edgar Hoover. Just who in hell do you think you are, mister? I got my shotgun loaded. You may come around here dressed in your Saturday Night Live Halloween outfit thinking that just because you don't speak a word of English, I'm not like John Hawk when he comes trespass on my line. Well, Smith & Wesson says you're sadly mistaken, stranger. Because I'm the wrong hero. I'm animated and I'm violent. I'm a cartoon! See, it doesn't hurt. Because I'm a cartoon. I could do this and it won't hurt because Like most comedians, my highest aspiration in life is to leave cappuccino farts on David Letterman's sofa. You know, when I was in high school, I uh, majored in music and physics. And as an experiment, we sped up Beethoven's Fifth Symphony to the speed of light. And you know what happened? Beethoven turned into a chimpanzee. People say to me, wrong hero, you'll never make it. You have no common sense. And I say to them, I'd rather have an imagination. The owners now. Just come out of your pay. Well, I'm already in hawk to you for two hundred thousand dollars, boss. I'm the wrong hero, and I like to ask the question: What if? What if the Patriots hadn't dumped tea into Boston Harbor? We'd be out worshiping some toothless old queen and eating trumpets. That's what would have happened. And what if Noah had gotten drunk and said, Oh, fuck it! Throw the animals overboard! Bring the fish up here! Or what if Nathan Hale had a talking cat? Would he have said, I regret that I have but nine lives to give for my country? And what if a parent were placed in the witness protection program to shield him from the mafia? I suppose one of them will shut up on a big face. We'll leave a seahorse's head at the bottom of his cage in a note that says, Lay off, Labramal, Labramal. Yes, I like to ask myself, to ask myself what if? What if we could run history backwards. What if President Clinton could forget his campaign promises and then remember them again? What if 
Dick Van Dyke could spit whiskey and whiskey and whiskey bottle. What if what if history ran backwards and Jackie Gleason spit whiskey into a coffee cup? What if history ran backwards and and British soldiers sucked smallpox out of Indian blankets? What if history ran backwards and, and, and Columbus sucked venereal disease out of Aborigines? What if potent words? And now I'm going to tell you all you need to know about politics in 30 seconds. One, politics are sports for people who are too fat to run. Two, if the election were held today, it would be November. And three, people who are in college should be in jail. That's a conservative viewpoint. People who are in jail should be in college. That's the liberal viewpoint. Now, if I were president, I'd promise guns and butter. I'd shoot the Crisco people. I'd promise to get rid of the words capital punishment. I'd replace it with something nice, like putting the killers to sleep. I would eliminate world hunger by nationalizing salads and distributing cheesecakes at Weight Watchers meetings. And I would eliminate pollution by requiring that all cars run on blood sugar. That's what I would do if I were president. And I would investigate allegations that nothing is more fun than a barrel of monkeys. What are these monkeys doing in there? That would be the point of my answer. Maybe we could appoint one of them to the Supreme Court. Every now and then you still see one of those delightful baby on board stickers. I've got a sticker on my car. It says, No children! My life is meaningless! So go ahead and run me off the fucking road! I also like those charming Ask Me About My Grandchildren bumper stickers. I got a bumper sticker that says, It's not your children who do 45 in the passing lane. It's you I want to ask about. Perhaps. Uh, I was in a band called The Cannibal Beatles. We had our hit single. I want to eat your hand back with She Loves You with gravy. Does this remind you of a commercial for HBO? Elton John sings, Philadelphia freedom puts you knee high to a man. Knowing Elton John as I do, I'm tempted to ask him what wouldn't put him knee high to a man. I know it's kind of late to be attacking uh, Elton John, oh, about 15 years too late, but I didn't get to it at the time. I have intellectual curiosity. I want to know, do professors fornicate? I remember being intimidated for reading books. Yes, the brutal slave masters would say. No, so you're spreading cold butter with a cold knife. Don't you know you're supposed to eat the butter and the bread and the knife? What's the matter? Isn't there a book that tells you how to apply butter to a cold piece of bread? I thought over that. Now I hate archaeologists. Archaeologists go and dig up 
people who are too stupid to live in the first place and bring to life their trash, their valuable trash, trash so valuable that the ancient people in question themselves had no use for it. But because of its antiquity, it's a priceless relic. Hi, I'm the wrong hero. And my life has been a Horatio Alger story. 150 pages long and full of lies. Now, if Batman and Superman were to fight Jesus and God, who do you suppose would win? Well, Batman would take care of Jesus right quick, but God would turn communion wafers to kryptonite. Faster than the speed of thought, more powerful than human logic. Look, open the firmament. Is it a comet? Is it an asteroid? Is it a UFO? Disguised as Jehovah, mild-mannered deity for a great Western civilization, when danger calls, he becomes super god devoted to supreme truth, divine justice, and the Judeo-Christian ethic.
this thing sample now? What do you think? Does it say it samples? No if it doesn't say it samples, it doesn't sample. No sampling capabilities. Hi, I'm the wrong hero. I'm going to make your life thoroughly miserable for the next half hour. Any objections? Good. My motto is... Yeah, I got an objection. What's that? I didn't hear the question. That's my objection. Where's the Hammond B3? That's what I need. I'm the wrong hero, and my motto is censor me. I'm mediocre. Censor me. Now I have a question. Your wish for has you. been granted. Would you answer a hypothetical question? Shut up. I would, or maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. Because people are always asking me questions. questions questions like wrong hero why I even have a German car and every time I start it it says Varum and Varum in German means why so every time I start my car it says why because I have to get to work why to help pay for the insurance on you when I can't even afford insurance on myself why because the lack of coherent political discourse in this country means that there is no universal health care. Why? Because members of the media are money-grubbing pack rats whose sole rationale is to sell advertising space for their fat cat publishers. Why? Because international conglomerates are in control of everything. Why? Because we're perfectly content to let fat-assed experts push us around. Why? Because we're so tired when we come home from work that all we're fit for is mindless entertainment, and so we make our politics into an empty spectacle designed to soothe our egos. Why? Because the military-industrial complex is too powerful to fight, so we encourage their ridiculous dreams of total control by taking part in their sinister road net. What was that? I didn't get that. I'll go a little slower. Driving is genetically inbred. would lose their jobs and they wouldn't be able to afford the weapons that we sell them in order to pay off our staggering trade deficit. There, is that clear enough? Apparently not, for when I started the car yet again it went, why? And I said, Tom, Dick, and Eric can waltz right in here and take away our property. Because we're soft and lazy and we'd rather die than walk so much as 200 yards. So start already. And with that, the car started and I drove away, leaving the third and second world Because I'm the wrong hero, and my rationale is to avenge the minor injustices visited upon us every stinking waking minute of every hour, which nobody can do anything about. For example, why are banks open from 9 to 5? Anybody with any money is at work! check they say they want to see a major credit card if you had a major credit card you wouldn't need to cash that check now would you but here's another thing can you play lady jane i'd like to get mick jagger's big lips and push him up against paul mccartney's googly eyes
it said. Listen, Porky, get your grubby hands off of my resume, because it's mine, you hear? Mine! People say to me, wrong hero, with an attitude like yours, you're not going to get very far. And I say to them, Kissing your boots. I will change my attitude for you because the exigencies of the workforce guarantee that I will be infinitely malleable. Take off the mask. Silence. Earth meat. Because I'm the wrong hero. And like most world leaders, I have the artistic temperament. The last real world leader who had the artistic temperament was Adolf Hitler. So, you did not like my drawings of the Cathedral of Cologne. All gypsies report to the town square. I have the artistic temperament. Fats Domino says he found his thrill on Blueberry Hill. If I weighed 300 pounds and I saw a hill made out of blueberries, I'd get a pretty large charge out of that myself. <coughs> Wouldn't you? And Steely Dan, in your sensitive love song, Ricky Don't Lose That Number, tell us to send it off in a letter to ourselves. So I wrote a letter to myself. song called Pink Cookies in a Plastic Bag, Getting Crushed by Buildings. I want to market this to the Midwestern demographics, so I'm going to call it Two Dead Frogs in a Vat of Butter, Getting Churned by a Farmer. That's a pretty good translation. I'm the wrong hero here to tell you that 99% of all statistics are wrong, including this one. I'm here to tell you, turn off your television. Turn it off. Reach over there. Don't do this. Don't. I made a trip to the emergency room for... No, just turn it off like that. There, don't you feel better already? I knew you would. Well, now that you've turned the television off and are no longer watching, I can say anything I want. Masturbation is the poor man's Nintendo. Employers prefer veterans because veterans have guns. When giants learn to dance, a lot of dwarves get crushed. And you can't pay me enough to pick up after them. White cloud toilet paper is going out of business. You know why? Because all along they were saying White Cloud is softer than the leading brand, and everybody knows that the leading brand is sticks, rocks, and dirt. Quite a distinction. Hi, I'm Big Chief White Cloud from the White Cloud tribe. Our sticks, leaves, and dirt, and owl pellets are softer than those of the other tribe. So as long as nobody's watching this, 
Call it Brenda. Oh. I'd like to know why are spies always talking on the telephone? Surely you've noticed in any espionage film or even an investigative reporter movie, they're always talking on the telephone. What a way to be inconspicuous, furtively whispering top secret documents into a payphone. I'm the wrong hero here to tell you, business is the religion of selfishness. Religion is frozen morality. Folk music is every bit as oppressive as the injustices it is supposedly attempting to alleviate. Country and Western music is a soap opera for drunks. As the world spins. The Grateful Dead is a soap opera for acid heads. <laughs> the Alps are a collection of overgrown rocks that rich people tear holes in the ozone layer so they can go and gawk at them. The American Revolution was fought so that plantation owners could drink cheap tea. How come nobody has ever seen Bill Clinton, Jay Leno, the Bud Man, and Sugar Bear in the same room? Could it be that they're all one and the same? Bill Clinton as jolly popular entertainer. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Pork barrel, yeah. Bill Clinton as Jay Leno. Look at Yale. 
Look at New Haven. What a shithole. And what's smack dab in the middle of New Haven? A bunch of smart people. Well, they're so darn smart that I was coming. It's like the third world out there, huh? Hey, yo. And another group of people that's highly overrated, the Arabs. They invented zero. Hey, that's, that's nothing. <laughs> and the sun ain't so hot. <laughs> and ice ain't all it's cracked up to be either. And why do people care more about two stupid whales off in the frozen Arctic than they do about 30 million Mexicans who are living below the poverty line? I'll tell you why. Because they've been fooled into thinking that whales are cute. Whales are gigantic, blubbery ingrates who vomit ambergris onto the world's oceans and whose rotten, hulking carcasses wash up on our nation's beaches. And if they were so smart, they'd put aside some money to clean up after themselves. I don't have to talk to you. I once spoke to a crowd of 4,000. 4,000. Okay. It was an anthill. And now, this is the wrong hero for Save the Termites. Only nine cents a day, and you can teach these termites to read and write so that when they devour your library, they can also be getting an education. For only nine cents a day, you could have a, a, a headquarters well, for Save the Termites, the rush, which the termites out. already ate. And so your nine cents a day would help to rebuild the center to help save the termites. Hi, this is the wrong hero for my 1-800 number. 1-800-SUCKER-NET. Just call 1-800, leave your name, and other appropriate demographics, such as your income, your age, your race, your religious affiliation, your sex, and be sure that all the information is accurate so we can sell it to various bunko schemes for 10 cents a name. My old buddy Ross Perot is a satisfied customer. Well, I didn't have a hell snowball's chance in hell until I got that 1-800 sucker that number. Now, people are stamping down my door to give me money. This is the best scam I've worked on since that IBM contract.
Hi, my name is Ricky Ricardo. For over 20 years, I had to put up with this horrible red-haired creature in the bed next to me going, Ricky, what? I tell you, death was preferable than having to spend an eternity with this horrible hag. And now I speak to you from beyond the grave and tell you, please don't do what I have done. Signed, Ricky. And now I'd like to sing, Ricky, don't lose that number. Ricky, why wow, don't lose that number? Hi, I'm the wrong hero, and I would like now to speak out on a very important subject. The conspiracy of farmers. Farmers with their bib overalls and straw hats and ornery mules and hag-ridden wives and the feeble-minded grocers that they have to deal with and the town drunks and the psychopathic aunt who's kept up in this barn attic. Farmers are a conspiracy. They control the nation's food supply. Farmers, senile coots shackle the rusted tractors off in the rust belt. They give their pigs names and cut their throats. Farmers, them sons of bitches have been getting away with murder for a long time. Farmers. Hey, Ron Hero, come on out. Stop. You. Get going. Come on. No. What you're doing. Do. I'm the wrong hero, and I'd like to advise you that this is my planet. So go away. Now you might remember the James Thurber inspired situation comedy, My World and Welcome to It. My message is even plainer. My planet, go away. Because I'm the wrong hero and this is the story of how I am and who I came to be. Hey, what about that Saddam, anyway? What is his problem? What's his plan? He wants to get atomic bombs so he can turn the Middle East into a desert wasteland. I'll tell you, man, it's ideas like that. I infiltrated the skinheads, by the way. But I gave myself away by leaving hair on the soap and putting up a poster of Sinead O'Connor in my bedroom. That was the clincher. Hi, I'm the wrong hero, and I like to get a little serious, so I tell you, in the few remaining moments that we have, the story of who I am, how I came to be, how I am, and who I came to be. The year is approximately 1500. An evil Count Dracula-like Italian nobleman is off raping the servant girls. And I'll bet you that there evil Count was one of my ancestors. Now you might remember the name of the place he was from. It was called Castle of Blood. <coughs> and it weren't no Disneyland. Goofy was a guy that had his ears cut off. <laughs> And don't ask how those full grown men acquired their falsetto voices. You don't want to know. Take it from me. Well, we fast forward about, oh, approximately 438 years and three months, two days, seven hours, six minutes, and four seconds. A meteor, gigantic in size, lands immediately outside of Pittsburgh in 1938. That 
very same moment, my father is born. So there you go, evil Count Dracula-like Italian Count from Castle of Blood plus Alien Seed equals, here revealed for the first time, the origin of the wrong hero. Because the wrong hero didn't have ordinary friends when he was growing up. The wrong hero had a twisted gallery of sideshow freaks and mutants for his friends. These cats make the Pillsbury Doughboy look like the Nay Plus Ultra of fashion. I'm telling you, the Kool-Aid jug looks like Joe Adonis next to these cats. For example, there was little Jackie Aphid. An Aphid is an ant cow, a tiny parasite which attaches itself to ants. And this was his name, Jackie Aphid. He lived over a dry cleaning establishment in which his parents worked. They were hollow-eyed, gaunt, emaciated. Jackie was hollow-eyed, gaunt, emaciated, and claimed that he was missing a bone from his stomach. A sad story. Because there are no bones in your stomach. It took me that long to realize. What disease did Jackie Affin have? Huffing dry cleaning fumes in his sleep? It's a wonder he was even as normal as he was. Hell, dead canaries lying in the bottom of the canary cage. Newspapers, the, the Von Hindenburg catches fire. That place hadn't been cleaned since the beginning of the Second World War. Dad, with his bone missing from his stomach, had to go off and be a core man. And then there was young Vincent from Italy. And whenever he was angry at you, he would say, Break up! And one time, he caught me lighting matches. And he said to me, I don't know you. You're bad. All I was trying to do was light matches to 4th of July firecrackers on the 5th of July that were lying in the gutter, which had already been lit anyway. I just don't understand this. And then there was my best friend, Harold Bauer. His parents, parents, were our landlords. So that added a nice little spin to the relationship. Hi, my name's Sharecropper. We're the diseased hillbillies that live two doors down from you whose destiny you control. Will you be my best friend? If only for the few short months in which our parents permit us to associate with each other due to the differences in taste and breeding. Oh, and by the way, can I call you Hal or will Mr. Bauer do? And would you mind taking your hat off when you come in my house? I know your grandparents own it, but I don't care. Well, one time I got my head stuck in his stairwell. And now it is, after they managed to prize my head out, we both got banana splits. I should have only gotten one. What did he do? He just stood there. It was his father that did all the work. He worked for Canada Dry Ginger Ale, but never once in the four years I knew him did he ever offer us any. It's stuff like that that makes a man mad. Mad, I tell you. And then there was Johnny Alder. Johnny Alder grew up in a socioeconomically deprived area. A big, bleeding, blistering, festering slum. And his sister, every Thanksgiving, would 
tell the traditional Alder family story about how young Johnny, aged two, got up on the Thanksgiving table and urinated on the turkey. And she would go around town singing a malicious song about Johnny Alder, which went, deep in the heart of Longhorn country, Johnny Alder peed on a turkey. And that sinister mantra has followed me for nigh these 25 years. But at last, I am free, free! But I won't truly be free until I have told the story of how I caught my hand in a ringer washer at the age of 11. This was the last childlike thing I was ever to do. One day, when in the housing project's basement, I looked at their archaic equipment, which included ringer washers, old-fashioned 1940s ringer washers are good enough for project scum and the like. Never mind that some six-year-old might flatten his head and end up looking like a conjure eel. And at the age of five, precocious lad, I would read distressing stories in the newspaper about the little boy who drank drops of beer from empty bottles and rode his tricycle out into the street. Or the little boy who thought a ringer washer was a pretty toy and got his hand crushed. And years later I remembered the little boy in the ringer washer. And I resolved that I would put my finger on the ringer washer. <laughs> and so I did. Bless his heart. And it felt good. It felt real good. So then I let the whole finger go in and pulled it out. And it felt good. Real good. And then I'll never forget. I put my hand in the ring of washer and it wouldn't come out. And my entire hand was slowly being sucked into the python-like maw of this ancient, deadly, rusty, archaic piece of machinery. Right up to the elbow. It was then that I had the presence of mind to unplug the sinister apparatus. But the whole day, I walked around with a paralyzed arm. And it taught me something. It taught me you can't pick lice out of your head with only one arm. It taught me that if you're wearing a cast, little boys will throw stones at it. It taught me that evil adults take delight in tormenting small children by destroying their dreams. For it was then that my evil gym coach, Mr. Maddox, whose glistering bald black head I would see even in my dreams. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and a basketball would be his leering head with its charcoal eyes. Mr. Maddox, on learning that I had put my arm in a ringer washer, took me aside and offered these words of comfort. Only you, boy. Only you. And he made me sit and read physical hygiene books, copying them out in longhand, while the other boys, hardy strapping youths, whose girlfriends, aged 11, would sneak them joints into school. These lads were off climbing ropes and playing dodgeball with dodge trucks. And there I was, 
with a gimpy paw writing with my wrong hand indecipherable scrawls to satisfy a sadistic, gigantic gym coach. Because it's a symptom. Gym coaches give birth to traffic cops. Traffic cops give birth to insurance underwriters. Insurance underwriters give birth to pathological prison wardens. And the sinister circle is completed when pathological prison wardens give birth to nagging mothers. And nagging mothers give birth to gym coaches. Well, it's just about time to wrap this up. I think I'd like to give you just one final...